Uh, Tennessee is one of my top four elite drafts. I really like what Tennessee did. And you take a look, of course, we're going to, you know, we, we can start off uh, with the fact that we knew how badly they needed offensive linemen. I mean, that was just, they had to get them. And they were able Absolutely. to get Skoronsky. And they didn't have to trade up to get them. So that was really cool for them. Later on, by the way, with all this offensive line issues, I thought they'd get Duncan in the sixth round. It was also very nice. Very good. You got another player you can work with. Okay, you added a couple of guys. But to get Will Levis, potentially, and maybe he should be labeled as their quarterback of the future in the second round, that was really big for them. Throw in a couple of solid players at running back and tight end, and uh, I thought they did really, really well. Yeah, I mean, Levis, you know, we agreed that we didn't love him as a first-round pick. But getting in the second round, good value. So sometimes you make this mistake. I see this in the media uh, publicly sometimes. You don't have a first-round grade on a player, so that automatically puts you in this notion that you don't like the player or you, you don't think he's good. It's just a value thing, right? And getting him in the second round, trading up for him. Um, they tried to trade up into round one for him, by the way. They tried to trade up to Buffalo. So to get that fifth-year option, they couldn't get it done. So, um, you know – does this create any issue with Ryan Tannehill? At some point, you just say, who cares? You know, he's not going to be in the picture next year. How old so, is he? 36? He's, I think he's got to be 35, yeah, 36. I mean, he he's knows making what a, the deal is. Making a ton of money. Yeah. Um, so, and if he doesn't like you know, it, then and, go out and play like a pro bowler. Yeah. And, you know, th it's funny. About this draft class in general, you love them. I watched the press conference of Vabral and Carthon. The media was kind of beating them up <laughs> about, about the trade. And they actually had to stop. About what? Just the lack of quality that they got in the draft overall. Okay. You know? Um, well, that is that because of the fact that their first round pick was an offensive lineman and they got a And they got the quarterback that yes, fell. That's probably you know. Why. I mean, Carthon's pretty much stopped the press conference for a couple of minutes. He said, like, you know, and Vrabel looked like he wanted to throw the microphone at these guys. Really? But he just said, he's like, you guys are crapping on a draft class. And he goes, for the sake of the players, and this is why I'm always sensitive, not that I have any say or or uh, pull publicly with, with this kind of stuff, but that's why it's one thing to maybe give a thought on a draft pick that you thought could have been placed elsewhere or value-wise. But, you know, that's why, you know, at the end of the day, these guys, you know, finally hit their dream of making the NFL and the media starts crapping them on right away. And what I like about Tennessee and the ethos that they've had, they've, they've been overachievers since Vabral has been there. And I kind of think they use this to their sure, advantage. Why not? They say, "Hey, nobody believes in you yep. guys. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go win the AFC South next year." So um, Skaronski, a no-brainer to me. I had them trading up for them in, in my mock draft. I thought they were going to have to do yeah. that to get in front of Chicago. I can't believe Chicago passed on him. Um, now, but again, he's got part of the reason why I didn't like Chicago's draft at all. Exactly. Guard tackle versatility. I think he's going to settle in at guard, but I do think if things get hairy on the outside, you could give him a look there. Levis, obviously the quarterback. Tajay Spears, um, they view him as a three-down runner. This is probably the most talent that they've had at running back behind Derrick yes. Henry. And we're, we're coming down on the twilight of his career. It happens quickly um, because of how big you are quickly. and all the carries. It happens fast. Yeah. And the, the next two guys, you touched on one of them. Josh Wiley, Love them as an athletic tight end. They have now have two really good athletes. Another team here. They have two tight ends that you're going to have to account for. Um, the only question is, oh, Karanko, uh, he's, he's the guy that you want in motion in the slot. And I thought Wiley is the same kind of player. Okay. So I'm not sure I, I feel good about him being the inline yeah, guy. Yeah, well, we thought they were going to get an inline tight end. Yeah. Right. So that, that's where I'm a little concerned. But, hey, if you can make it work, those are two really good weapons on a team that doesn't have any – talent at wide receiver or ve very little talent at wide receiver, I should say. But Jalen Duncan could be the make or break for this class because talent wise, when you get the right tape, when you initially watch him, my tape leading up to the 2022 season, you see some first round traits here. And I mean, yeah. that he had a ter horrific season. He was getting beaten pass protection on the outside over and over. So I kind of put him on the inside. I, I made him a tackle to guard convert. One of those guys that I think is going to convert inside. He also gained about 15 pounds between the combine and pro day. 
And then you start to hear some things in the draft that there's some issues with the character. So now you're like, oh, crap. You know, did I overrate him? You know, because when you don't get access to that kind of information, it does matter. But I think this is the kind of organization that can get the most out of them. You know, it's just kind of like, and you're going to know early on, kind of like Keishon Butte with the Patriots. You're going to know very early on if this kid's this kid could be a starter. I, I'll, in, in I'll tell you right State. now, I think based on this offensive line, yeah, if he's not a starter, then I don't think they have something. Because okay. I think he can fair. with this offensive line. I actually think now. Look, maybe maybe we because we don't know anything about whether Andre Dillard. We're just going based on, I mean, is this, is this really, you know, what is this? But maybe Dillard was just, hey, you know, I, I got nowhere to go. I mean, right. I, you know, but now I'm now I, I'm open to being a starter. Watch out. I'm going to be effective. And maybe that does happen. But if he's all of a sudden just, no, 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 he's not a starter, then I could see Duncan starting. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, at least before the end of the year, maybe not right away, but, you know, 2023 for uh, sorry yeah 2023 for me in regards to this offensive line is you got to get answers on Skaronsky, Dillard, Jalen Duncan, and maybe even Dylan Raddins, whose college tackle has not worked out so far. Um, but I do think I think there's an upside. I do think there's a future with him at guard. Um, well, what about so, uh, uh, Petit Friere? I he played well enough to say that he can he deserves another year or two at right tackle. Don't shift him to the left side. Oh, Keep no, him no, right no, where no, he's no, at. No, no, no. Keep him right where he's at and let and let that be the one spot on this line that you say, "Hey, we're not going to play with this for the next year or two unless he really blows up and goes backwards." Uh, but I think this is one of the biggest themes of the year before you put Levis under center is figure out what you have with oh, this yeah. current crop of guys. Definitely. I don't want Levis starting with this offensive line. And and by the way, no. I could easily see this being one of those teams that goes out and gets one of those free agents, one of those veteran guys. Absolutely. Yep. And even if they have to over, overpay a couple of million to get them. Yep, I agree. And they also added uh, the Boise State offensive lineman, right? In free agency? In free agency, yeah, Joku. So yep, that's not bad. I had a draft. Yeah, I had a draftable grade on him. I bet he makes a team just based on what's on yep. there. Um, and what about you know, uh, thought- the receivers? They added a couple of receivers. Uh Copeland and Jackson in free agency. Yeah. And they drafted one out of Tennessee Martin really late. Um, you know, this is where the talk got angry with Vrabel and Carthon. They were bashing them for not adding more wide receiver talent to the room. And, you know, you can make that argument that they should have added more wide receiver talent, but what one of those first five, four picks, five picks do you not like, you know, you have to like Skaronsky, you have to like Levis, you have to like Spears, you have to like Wiley. You know, they just didn't have a lot of they didn't have a lot of bullets to work with, you know. So, yeah, I think they probably wanted to add more wide receiver talent, but they just couldn't do it because the resources were not there. Um, yeah, but Dowell, wide receivers, you know, if if you want one, you can go and get one. Exactly. I mean, there's and tons of receivers think, in the league. In terms of what this team does and the success that they have had in recent years, I just don't think it's that no. important for them. I don't think. I don't think it was going to add much to their team this year. The guys that they did draft, I do think, can add an element to this team both this year and the long term future. I mean, if you look at it, their 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 AJ Brown is is Traylon Burks. That's yeah. what he's there yeah, if for. He, if he develops and Kyle Phillips comes back to slot, which they were really optimistic about him leading up to the season before he got hurt, the room's not no, bad. They only they, you know, they're, they're not, one it's, short. It's not good. One short. It, yeah, it. they're one short. And maybe some of that can be made up with the, the uh, duo they have at tight end. Yes. And, of course, you've got the, the – the, the, as you said, they've never had now three running backs. Right. Haskins and Spears, we talked about them needing that guy out of the backfield. Well, they got him. So, yeah, that running back room is better than they've had. They've got the two tight ends, which they haven't had in a couple of years. So, yes, that can make up for it. But the whole offense is all going to come down to that offensive line. So yep. no matter what we say about all those other positions, uh, was there a player? Uh, they, they, they signed uh, a handful of guys on defense and they did not draft a single player on defense. So yeah. any of those guys that they signed, should we keep an eye on? Caleb Murphy is an edge rusher with natural ability, bend skills. He's just light. He weighs 230, you know, so I, he's going to probably need a red shirt year. Um, but the offensive guy that I'm going to keep my eye on is the kid that we've talked about him a couple of times, actually, is Jacob Copeland from Maryland. Um, just movement, the movement traits are there and he did flash. Maybe um, he's a he wide receiver these, that, that they're complaining about. That's, uh, that, that can make, there a, are, make a play. 
there are people from Maryland from that program that say he's the best out of him, Demas, and Rakeem Jarrett. So just keep an eye on him. He probably got put into the situation that is the best for a guy to shine. <laughs> Absolutely. Roster. 